Is it too early to be talking about next year's draft already? We don't think so because there is a prospect that you should be really interested in as Habs fans. We'll be getting into that, plus a current Habs prospect that you might have never heard of and why he could solve a lot of the Habs problems in the future. So stick around for this edition of Habs Digest. Jesse, the first thing today, could the Habs go after Cole Hudson in next year's NHL entry draft? Yes, Cole Hudson. That's not a typo. There's another one. In fact, there's four of them. But next year, Cole Hudson, oh boy, he has some potential. He had four goals, 21 assists, 20, or, uh, 25 points in 32 games with the U.S. National Development Program. He's also a 5'8 defenseman, a little bit shorter than Lane, although he's still only 17 years old. Even Lane Hudson himself says, I think he has that ability to be better than me. I think he'll get drafted much higher. He's a super talented player, and he's a top prospect for next year's draft. Jesse, uh, Cole Hudson is a really interesting thing, especially since the Habs have gone with, you know, the family ties with the Pitlicks, with the Jack Eyes. Could this be the next edition of that? The Hudson family is just crazy good at hockey and it very well could. And a big reason because of this is this, they've been pushing each other their entire lives. And when, you know, Lane Hudson is telling you that I think that my younger brother can be even better at me, who just happens to play defense as well and could even be selected higher than me. I think he's probably right on, on both accounts, right? This is a family that loves hockey, but you got to feel like the word's out now, or at least it's definitely getting there on smaller players. Everybody doesn't want to make the same mistake like many GMs made on passing up on late Hudson. So you have to feel like Cole Hudson, there's a very good chance he could go top 10, top five of next year's draft because people are recognizing now how good of an impact player like he can be. Like, even in many scouts' eyes, they find that he's more dynamic mm -hmm. and even more d dominant at the same age as, as Hudson. Of course, in many ways, they're similar, right? Where still that strong offensive game, maybe the defensive lapses, but this is a player that makes up for it. And he kills plays, even though he's not the biggest, with his smarts and then also with his sticks, you know? So again, sounding very much like Lane Hudson as well. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, the stature is pretty similar to 5'8". 143 pounds. Now, again, he just turned 17 a few weeks ago, so this guy's still a kid. There's tons of time to grow, just like Lane, Bones, Hudson himself. But one thing that I think stands out about Cole as a prospect, Jesse, look at those penalty minutes. Now, those aren't all just delay of game or tripping minors that he's getting because he's irresponsible. No, he is actually surprisingly physical for his size. And like you said, he's a bit more dynamic. He does a bit more, and Lane even says he's kind of a better overall player. So, I don't know. I feel like if this guy, and he might even grow to be a bit taller. I think you saw a report saying he's up to, what, something like 5'10". So, I mean, just picturing Elaine Hudson with a more solid all-around game who can body check, I feel like that's a guy that, especially if you're the Habs, like maybe he doesn't fit the best, but you definitely have to keep your eye on him. That's it. And that's why we're hyping it up so much. It's like displaying the same type of talent. Obviously, you got to know he's learning all those shimmies, those moves from, you know, his older brother Lane, you know, but then as well being able to add like a little bit more of a physical component, which obviously never hurts when you're a defenseman in the NHL. Now we're starting to get a really solid combination. So, I mean, this is the family that just keeps on giving and giving with amazing young hockey players. If you could believe it, there's another young defenseman for the Hudson. <laughs> Lars is actually coming up, has a chance to be a very high prospect in a couple years as well. Uh -huh. So again, a family that loves hockey, right? That sits down, they watch it together. They've been pushing each other their whole life, you know? So just amazing to see the development from all these young players. Yeah, it has potential to be like the Barrys in basketball or even the Sutters in hockey. Like just this huge hockey family that'll never end. Who knows, maybe 20, 30 years from now, Lane is coaching and there's 18 of them skating around. There's one for each team at some point. It's really crazy, honestly, uh, when this happens. But of course, younger brother syndrome too, right? The, the younger brother's often better because they have to play against the older ones. And Quinn, of course, the oldest, not really an NHL level. Then Lane has shown that he has insane upside and now Cole looks to be even better I can't wait to see what Lars has to do but man it's it's just very interesting to talk about right especially having Lane on the team you can think maybe a future free agent if the Habs don't get to draft him there's maybe some incentive to come over so we're going to be keeping an eye on this situation even now almost a year before the draft the final thing for today's video Jesse I want to talk about Maybe the best Habs prospect that you guys have never heard of. Now, me and Jesse, we know about Bogdan Kanyushkov because we run this channel, right? We have to, to know about a lot of Habs prospects, but who is he? Well, 
He's a 20-year-old defenseman out of the KHL, drafted by the Habs in the fourth round this year, number 110 overall, and he actually put up some good points, 25 points in 64 KHL games, right-hand shot defenseman. Now, the interesting thing about Bogdan Konyushkov is, first of all, he's an overager. You don't usually get drafted out of the KHL at that age as a defenseman, but especially because Bogdan actually was in the Russian Junior League at the age of 19, which does happen a lot, but not usually if you have NHL upside. He played really well down there in his rookie season in the KHL. He was nominated for Rookie of the Year. He led his team in ice time and had way more production than Alexander Romanov at the same age, even though Romanov, of course, had a bigger role. And the final thing, Jesse, I don't want to take too much time, but look at this. This is a list of the top scoring defensemen in the KHL this past season. And you see Bogdan there at number 19 and his D partner, Maxim Fedotov, at 17. They play on the same team, same pairing. And those are the only two, other than Shahir Mohamedoulin, who was formerly a 20th overall draft pick, that are under the age of 20 on this list. It's just insane to me what he's actually been able to do, kind of flying under everyone's radar. Do you see him as maybe ever coming over to the Habs? Because like, I feel like his production's maybe a bit better than, than the media might give him credit for. Exactly, and that's why we're talking about him. He might be a draft steal, right? Putting up some some pretty respectable numbers. And what I like about this, uh, this draft pick is that Kind of reminds me of uh, of another young Russian defender that we lost recently in, in Alexander Romanov, who, you know, obviously many of us Habs fans were still a big fan of, you know, his his big hip checks and, and everything else. And this is a young defenseman who's obviously not very big, but kind of physical as well, almost even making you think of another uh, defenseman, Alexei Emelin, who mm-hmm. also used to play for the Habs as well. So um, kind of in that same sort of pedigree, but, you know, it'd be nice if we could get that a type of player of like of this, you know, kind of caliber back um, in the Habs organization. Of course, you know, we did sign a contract uh, in the KHL for the next three years, so we got to be patient. Who knows if he plays out, you know, his entire term um, over there or not. But, I mean, this guy does have the shapings, you know, of like he could, some scouts are saying, be a top four uh, defender in the NHL, you know. So, again, you know, somebody to keep an eye on and uh, be interesting to see where this one plays out. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, one thing with Bogdan is uh... – is his, his attributes, his best things, are kind of things that the Habs like to go after, right? His best attribute mm-hmm. is his hockey IQ, straight up. I mean, that's something the Habs really, really value. But he's also a very good skater, and he has great passing in the offensive zone. So he doesn't have insane offensive upside because of his lack of shot, really, right now. But he can contribute for sure, and he's a good skater, and he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Now, you did say he is a bit physical, however, in his 5'11 frame. Will that you know translate to the NHL? I'm not sure, but... You got to think the Habs seeing this guy with insane hockey IQ, great passing, a mobile defenseman. That's something they're really going for, right? This arch type. And I feel like he just perfectly fit the bill. And even though he went a few picks higher than he was mocked, I feel like it's just a very low risk, potentially very high reward move. And you have to feel like Martin St. Louis has some impact. Like not only is he kind of advocating for players he wants drafted, but also for players that would kind of, um, you know, be well suited being coached by him. So, of mm-hmm. course, a player that has a high IQ, he's known for being very creative, kind of a good playmaker. And of course, we're looking for mobile defensemen. We've kind of turned the tide of the type we want our defensemen to really be able to skate, right? And we're kind of we're slowly kind of transitioning how our decor is shaped. So this feels exactly the type of defenseman that we want to look for in, in today's modern NHL. So, I mean, I think it was a great selection and. Uh, We'll definitely have to keep an eye and, you know, who knows, maybe we could get him over here in a year or two. That would sound pretty great to me. But that'll do it for this edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think of Bogdan. Let us know what you think of Cole Hudson potentially being a Hab in the future. We'd love to hear from you down below. I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.